Welcome, 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 friends, back to a sew along featuring yours truly, as well as my newest Nomi pattern. Today, we're going to be doing the sew along for my fall pattern, which is ME 2050. First of all, let's get into these numbers. The numbers of my patterns are so easy to remember, and I'm here for it 1000%. But let's talk about this pattern, okay? So this is going to be, yes, your favorite fall pattern, but the beautiful thing about this pattern is that it has the ability to transition from season to season. So of course, yes, we're releasing it for fall, but that does not mean that this has to stay in your fall wardrobe. That means that you can absolutely take this to summer, spring, winter, whatever your favorite season is, wherever you see yourself getting dressed up in this here garment. So let's hop into the actual pattern itself. This pattern features two different specific like pattern designs. Now listen, you can mix and match however you see fit. That is of course the beautiful thing of making your own wardrobe. But both of the patterns feature a super deep V as we can see right here because we're serving up cleavage, okay friends? Now, if you're deciding to go for pattern view B, we also have a little neck situation that you can put around here. It's a neck band. It just goes on at the same time as you putting on the whole garment. And I love that because it gives a little bit of dramatic flair, um, adding just a, just a different design um, element in there. Now, listen, I also know that not everybody loves things around their neck. So if that is not for you, absolutely go to view A, which is what, of course, I'm wearing. Now, in truth, I'm wearing a little bit of a mixture of both view A and view B how so because i went ahead and i made my dress in this midi length and i eliminated the here neckband now if you decide that you are color blocking queen and you are here for view b go ahead and color block it the beautiful thing about these seams is that you can color block to your heart's desire you can pick four five six different types of fabrics blend them together and give them an individual look now let's get into what inspired me to design this pattern. I wanted something that was going to celebrate my body. As you all know, I had a double mastectomy in June of 2023. And just because I had to have that done does not mean that I'm not here to show off these here boobs, okay? So I wanted to give lots of cleavage. I also wanted to give something that offered a little bit of fit, right? So we've got some negative ease going down the body, but then in this upper body area, it's giving us a pseudo bat wing look. Not quite as dramatic as like your bat wing, but we're definitely giving you like a little bit of drop shoulder situation. And I love the juxtaposition of the fitted with the flared, but in reverse, right? Oftentimes we see the fit up top and the flare below, but for this pattern, we're being fitted down below and we're flaring at the top and I love that silhouette. One of the other things that I'm loving about this pattern is that it's so versatile. Depending upon what kind of fabric that you choose to sew with, it will give you a completely different look. I've made this pattern and this is in a bullet knit. It's a textured bullet, so it's a, it's a double knit. This version here is in a French terry, which is perfect. It's giving casual, it's giving, you know, I'm dressed down, but I also look put together. This one here that I'm wearing and I did the sew along for is in a Liverpool. So all of the double knits is something that I worked with. And I love the double knits, namely because I feel a little bit more supported. And like, you know, they're helping me to hide a couple of my lovely lady lumps that I don't necessarily want everyone to see. But if you're like, hey girl, I really want to use a double brush polyester, go for it. It's going to give you a, a lighter feel and look. Now, I do highly recommend choosing a fabric that has really great recovery because something like a rayon spandex is going to stretch out and it's not going to retain the shape of the dress, right? So this is not your like flowy dress or your flowy situation. You definitely want something that you're going to be able to hold on to your shape. Another really great fabric to do this pattern in is going to be a peached performance. If you're like, Veronica, where do people get peach performance from? Like, what is that? You can absolutely find that at Amanda's Bundles. That's the only place that I've been able to find it. You can do this dress out of a Ponte knit. That would be fantastic. The beautiful thing about when you make things out of a Ponte is that they wrinkle way less. So if you are someone who travels a lot and you've got to look put together, Definitely grab hold to a little bit of Ponte, 
make this, throw that in your bag, you will look absolutely put together, ready to go. Now, let's go ahead and hop on into the actual sew along. As you all know, I like to do designer notes in between my uh, in between my takes. There will not be a whole lot of designer notes throughout this sew along. Why? Because this is one of the easiest patterns that you will put together. If you are a beginner, this is absolutely beginner friendly. I do add in this sew along, utilizing something that is called stitch witchery for our seams. When you're working with a double knit, using something like stitch witchery is definitely gonna help you around these seams. Why? Because it's gonna help that turn of cloth, which can be a little bit thicker when you're working with a double knit, especially if you're doing the facing piece in the double knit at the same time as your outer piece or your main fabric being in that double knit. When you have thicker fit, thicker knits put together, they can cause a bulky seam and it can look a little wonky. So I added a little bit of stitch witch as I was sewing around this here facing area just to kind of give me a nicer and cleaner finish. It's something that you can add to the seams. It's not called for in the pattern, but it's just a shortcut of mine that I like to take. Something else to just note is that throughout this here entire sew along, I will be utilizing my serger as well as cover stitch. If you do not have either one of those machines, that's fine. You can absolutely still sew this pattern and you can do it on your sewing machine, no problem. With that, friends, let's go ahead and jump into the sew along for ME 2050. Okay, so we're gonna be taking a look at ME 2050. This pattern actually starts at a size 10 and goes up to the 32. And we are super excited to expand that sizing in here. So let's go ahead and get started with this pattern. I'm super excited about this. So taking a look at the back, we of course have our line drawings here. There's two different versions, which of course you can mix and match and make your own. We've got our sizing, our body measurements here, along with the um the finished measurements that we actually have on the inside here now when deciding on your sizing it's really important to pay attention to the finished measurements which of course we have right here now for a garment that is like this you definitely want to base your sizing on the finished measurements because we're using a knit for it there is a little bit more um just a little bit more flexibility as far as choosing your sizing goes. So you can have this garment fit as tight or as loose as you would like to. And again, we started at a size 10 and we're going up to this size 38 women's. So that means that our finished garment bust is starting at a size 32 or 32 inches. The waist begins at a size 28 inch and then the hip starts at 36 inches and it ends with a bust of 59, a waist of 55 and a hip of 63 and a half. And so that is the finished measurements, right? So that means that if you were like, I would like for this to be a little bit more fitted, definitely size down. If you're like, I would really like a looser fit, then definitely size up based off of these finished measurements. Inside of here, we also have the cutting layouts. Of course, these are designed to kind of give you the maximum cutting space for your fabric. And look, I just wanna really point out how we have essentially just one page. One, this is it for your directions. That's it, we have one page. We don't even have a front and a back. So just highlighting how easy this pattern is. This pattern is perfect if you are a beginner or if you are an adventurous um, intermediate. It does not matter your size, your uh, skill level. There is definitely um, space for you to do this in any, in, at any point in your sewing journey. So now again, we will be using a double knit. For this specific project, I am using a Liverpool. So this is the knit fabric that I'm going to be working with. This is like a mint green. As you can see, it's beautiful. Let's talk about the stretch content in it. So we have our nap here. And so we're gonna stretch and we have great stretch going horizontally. And we have some good stretch going vertically as well. This is important, right? Because whenever you're sewing knits, you wanna make sure that you're picking the knit that is perfect for the garment that it has been, been designed for. 
For this garment, you do need a little bit of vertical stretch. Why? Because this, while this is not necessarily a body con, it is going to affect the fit of the garment. So this Liverpool is perfect. It has beautiful drape, as you can see. With that, let's go ahead and review the pattern pieces that we're going to need to make this garment come to life. Not be going in pattern order because I'm just reaching down and grabbing. This is piece number seven, which is going to be our belt. Again, this is completely optional. I love the belt because it allows us to cinch our little waists together and add a little bit of additional just um, viewing pleasure to the pattern. So we have that. We'll be cutting two of these out. We've got sleeve piece number five. Because this is a drop sleeve, you'll notice the difference in the shape. Um, and we'll need to cut two of those. We also have pattern piece number six, which is the cuff that goes on here. And just so that you can see when you line this up, you will be stretching that cuff a little bit. So make sure that you're being mindful of the direction of stretch for your fabric. You definitely want your stretch to be going uh, this way. And then you definitely want your grain line to be going that way, okay? Then of course, we're gonna be facing this here garment. So we've got our front facing right here and we've got a nice, beautiful, deep V-neck um, where that facing is going to come into play. Then we've got our back facing piece. Next, we have our back piece where we will be cutting two mirror images of this because we do have center seams for both pieces, for both front and back. So we've got our back pieces, which we will be cutting two, and we're cutting again um, mirror images. And then we have our final piece, which is actually piece number one, which is the front. And as we can see here, it's giving us that nice deep V action, and we'll also be cutting two of these. Okay. So let's go ahead and cut our pattern pieces out. All right, friends, so we've made it to our very first designer notes. The first designer note is take note to how you're cutting out your pattern. If you're wanting to color block this and have the entire say left side of your body one color or the entire right side of your body one color, make sure that you're making note of that as you're cutting these pattern pieces out. Why? Because you can make that mistake of having one color here, color here, and then the opposite color on the back and that might not be the look that you're going for so as you're cutting out your pieces and lining your fabric up just be mindful of the color scheme that you're going for and make sure that you're lining that up properly so that you get the look that you're going for okay and so now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for our back pieces because again these pieces have seams so also to note that the back has a slight sway back adjustment that has already been added to it. So we're going to go ahead and just clip this together or pin if that's your jam. We all know that I do not love clips. That is just not my favorite way to go about things. So make sure that you're using something that is within your preference. Clipping that together before we go ahead and take this over to my serger. I'll be using a serger to do all of my construction including my top stitch because I'll be using a cover stitch for that part as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and take these two pieces over to the machine and sew. Okay, so now that we're at the machine, we're gonna go ahead and sew straight down the middle. The first piece up is our front piece that I'm gonna just go ahead and pop up underneath here and sew straight, straight line. Alright, so let's put this one off to the side and now we're going to go ahead 
and sew straight down the back as well. Um, just take off our clips. And then after I sew down here, we're going to go ahead and just put our right sides together for both our front and back pieces. And we're going to sew our side, our shoulder seams, okay? We're going to go ahead and do the same exact thing for our, our facing pieces, where we just go ahead and stitch them straight down the short seams. And then we're going to go ahead and add them to our garments. It's really important to note that whatever seam allowance that you decide to use, again, if you are kind of in between sizes and you're like, if I just cut down on that seam allowance, it'll work out fine. Just make sure that you maintain your seam allowances, whatever they are. Just make sure that they are the exact same um, that you're using. The reason why is because if you decide to, say, go for a quarter inch seam allowance here, but then on your facing pieces, or rather on your... Um, your main garment pieces, you do a quarter inch seam allowance, but then on your facing pieces, you do a five eighths seam allowance. That facing is not going to match your pieces properly. So now we're going to go ahead and attach our back pieces to our front pieces, right sides together. Again, matching it up at these short ends. So that way they match up. We're just going to go ahead, pop some stitches in there. Before we go ahead and put them into the main fabric, when we do that, I do have a little trick that I am going to show you that I like to use so that I can get these, um, these facings to lay down flat. So my secret weapon is some stitch witchery. So I'm going to use this around my neckband at the same time, and I'm going to stitch this at the same time, and then when I press it down, it's going to be nice and flat, and then it'll be easy to just throw in a top stitch if I decide to. Now, this pattern does call for top stitching on top of the outside of the facing, but if you decide you don't want to and you still want to lay flat, stitch witchery is going to be your best friend, okay? All right, friends, it looks like we're back for another designer note. So when you're using your stitch witchery, I recommend using either a half inch or five eighths inch stitch witchery. Why? Because it's gonna make sure that you're one, able to get that caught up in that seam and two, giving you enough space to iron in between your facing as well as your main fabrics, okay? Stitch witchery is definitely one of my favorite products out there. It helps with that clean finish. So be sure to use it if you're a little nervous about working with this facing or if you're working with that double knit and you don't want to necessarily have those puffy seams, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and put my right sides together so that way when I fold this outwards, I don't have any seams touching me. I'm gonna go ahead and put clips in where all of my seams are. That is purely out of habit because I do wanna make sure that these things match up with those seams. I feel like when you have um, like the perfect seam matchup, that just speaks volumes. So we're just going to go ahead and put these clips into place exactly where these seams are. Now, a lot of times in garments like these, uh, the neckband will be banded. Facing offers you the same look or a similar look without actually adding anything to the garment. So no additional like, you know, there's no additional inch or quarter inch added to that, that neckline. So now that I have this clipped into place, I'm just going to grab my stitch witchery. I'm not going to cut it. I'm literally just going to put it on the actual neck band or the neck facing itself. And I'm going to just stitch around using it. So I'll just do this back piece so that you can see just what I mean. So I'm gonna line it up. I'm gonna line it up right here with this piece. Let's go ahead and pop this underneath here. And so I'm just going to make sure that this is all nice and sorted out. And I'm going to make sure that my stitch witchery follows these seam, seam lines as well. So 
So I'm going to go ahead and finish this neckband with my stitch witchery. And then we'll come back and take a look at our sleeves. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and uh, clip in our sleeves. So we've got our garment completely open up right here. Now I love to put my sleeves in, in open sleeve style, meaning that my garment side seams are not closed up and not together. So to do this, we're going to go ahead and make sure that you have marked your the back of your uh, sleeve piece because the arm C's are different. So we're just going to go ahead and clip this into place. <clears throat> so I don't really clip too much for my sleeves. I really just essentially want my center to be in the center. So definitely going to clip that. And then making sure that that end piece or the beginning piece is also in there. So you're going to do this for both of your uh, sleeves. And then we're going to go ahead and take this to the machine to sew. Boom. Okay, so now that we've gone ahead and put in our pockets, we're going to, I mean, not our pockets, but our sleeves, we're going to go ahead and just put our right sides together. And we're just going to sew straight down this side seam of the sleeve as well as the bodice. Okay, so here it is. We've got our right sides together. We're going to go ahead and sew this side seam. So our garment is basically constructed now. So now what we need to do is we're going to top stitch around the neck. We're going to go ahead and add our wristbands. We're going to do the bands first because we are set up for our serger right now. So I'm going to go ahead and put my bands on and then we're going to go ahead and make the belt. So now when I do my cuffs, what I do is I fold them in half the way that they are supposed to fit. So this is how the cuff is supposed to hit fit. And then I fold it down again, essentially making a little sandwich. The reason why I do that is because it reduces the amount of bulk in the seam because I'm using a double knit, which is this Liverpool, the turn of cloth is going to be really thick. And so I'm trying to minimize that as much as I possibly can. So we're going to just go ahead, pop this in and just sew straight down. And we're going to do the same thing again, right sides together, and then folding it down to create the sandwich, sewing that. And so then when you turn your cuff out, this is how your seam is looking, which is perfect. So now we're going to go ahead and add our cuffs onto our sleeves. And I'm going to make sure that my right sides are together. So I'm just going to go ahead and slip this inside of the sleeve. And I'm going to be matching up these seams. I always like to match the seams. It makes things easier. We're going to have to give a slight stretch for this um, for this cuff. So just make sure that you're mindful of that. I am not going to go ahead and pin or clip that into place. It's not enough of a stretch for me to quarter it, but I will wrap it around here so that it's a little bit easier for me to go ahead and make sure that I put this on and I stretch it evenly, okay? So to do that, I'm just going to have my hand on the actual cuff so that way that's the part that I'm pulling. And because I'm doing an even stretch, 
it's going to come out perfectly. And then I'm just going to trim this down a little bit. And so now we've got our cuff on. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat that for the other side before I move on to making the belt. Okay, so now this belt is going to be super easy. All we're doing is we're putting our right sides together for these short ends. Just like this. And I'm going to be doing this the exact same way that I did the uh, belt loop that was for my, my summer pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, of course, having my right sides together, I'm going to sew it down. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to leave a small hole over here. Why? Because I promise you it's a lot easier to turn out that way. So I'm going to just lift up, pull, and then I'll just pop it down. I'm leaving about a two inch hole. Okay. So now that I have this hole left here in the middle, that's going to be what I use to actually turn my belt out. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and fold this over the long ways matching up these long sides together. And starting at this end, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I completely sew this shut. So I'm gonna start off with this end, sew this down. And then I'm gonna sew the entire rest of the way. And then I'll show you what it looks like when it's time for us to turn it out. Okay, so now that we've completed the belt, we've got this opening here that we left. So now all you have to do is just easily reach in and turn your belt out. The important thing is that both of your ends are now completely sealed. So you don't have to worry about going back in and top stitching it. And I know for me, that's especially annoying, right? If we go through And boom, here we have the end of the belt. Now, of course, what you can do is take your, um, take one of the, uh, these things here, which allows you to go ahead and make sure that your, um, the corners are nice and, and tight. If you're someone who is like, eh, I don't necessarily need that, girl, I'll just go ahead and leave it, okay? So now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and turn out the other side. Before it's time for us to just top stitch our neck facing as well as going ahead and hemming the dress. So now the dress is hemmed and completely finished. We did go ahead and add that top stitch around the neckband and we are done. I'm loving the fit, the fabric, every single thing. All right, friends, it looks like you made it to the end of this so long. So big congratulations if you completed your garment. Now, if you're someone who is like, Veronica, I don't necessarily want to be showing a little bit of top heavy cleavage, no shade. All you have to do is just raise that neckline, raise the facing to match, and it will fit you beautifully, okay? Remember that just because we have pattern pieces and tutorials within these here pattern envelopes, they're just suggestions. You're free to do exactly as you want so that it fits into your wardrobe seamlessly. The goal here is always to make something that you're going to actually wear, okay? So make sure that you're doing that. Lastly, thank you so much for joining me for this so long. This pattern is definitely one of my favorite patterns. The photo shoot that I did here was one of my favorite photo shoots. My husband was behind the camera, so I was able to get a couple of really great shots. And I am loving fall. Fall is one of my favorite seasons. So designing another pattern um, and having a one year, almost like anniversary situation between the first time that I designed a pattern for Nomi and this time definitely has me in my feels. So thank you so much for joining me one on this entire design journey with Nomi patterns, as well as thank you so much for purchasing my pattern and joining me for this sew along. As always, if you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to drop them below. I do come over here and check out the comments just to make sure there are no questions. And if 
if you're also like, hey girl, what about if I want to reach out to you on social media? You can find me at Needle in the Bell on Instagram as well as TikTok, okay? So if you do have questions, feel free to slide into my inbox and go ahead and ask away. And lastly, if you make this garment, or rather when you make this garment, please make sure you go ahead and tag me so that I can see all of your makes. Thank you so much again, and I can't wait to see what you're sewing. Happy sewing, friends.